X-rays fluorescent spectroscopy is an analytical technique which gives you information about the element present in a material and the chemical composition of material. So X-rays fluorescent spectroscopy is a very diverse technique and it is an essential part of material science, metallurgy, microelectronic, physics and chemistry. So in a simple word, X-rays fluorescent spectroscopy is a technique which gives you an information about the presence of element in a material and also about the chemical composition of material. These materials which we can determine by X-rays fluorescence spectroscopy include metal, alloys, ceramic, polymer, mineral and wide range of petroleum products. So this means that you can basically analyze the chemical and as well as elemental composition are in a material um, in a wide range of material by using excess fluorescence spectroscopy. These material may include polymer, ceramic, mineral composites and different kind of wide range of petroleum products. Another interesting fact about the X-rays fluorescent spectroscopy is the precision of the, this technique. X-rays fluorescent spectroscopy gives you a comprehensive detail from part per million to high percentage of the elemental composition of a material. So basically, you can determine a very precise elemental composition of a material present in a material by using X-rays fluorescence spectroscopy. The range uh, of the material which you can basically analyze is in the range of part per million to a higher range. So basically you can determine an elemental and chemical composition up to a very small scale to a larger percent of the element present in a material. Now dear student, what do you think how the, you can basically determine a chemical composition of a material using X-rays fluorescence spectroscopy? X-rays fluorescence spectroscopy is based on emission of characteristic secondary X-rays from the material that has been excited by being bombarded with high energy X-rays. So this means that in X-rays fluorescence spectroscopy initially a material which you want to analyze or a material of which you want to know a chemical composition is bombarded by high energetic X-rays. So now, when high energetic X-rays are bombarded on the surface of material, the material get excited. And due to the excitation of the atom present in a material, the material will emit secondary X-rays and the intensity and as well as energy of this emitted secondary X-rays are analyzed and on the basis of that chemical and as well as elemental composition of the material is determined. Dear student, please note that the emitted secondary X-rays are based on the property of the material. They are based on the nature of the material and on the basis of that you can basically determine a presence of different kind of element in a material. Whereas the intensity with which the secondary X-rays will be emitted on the basis of the intensity of the secondary emitted X-rays, you can determine the quantity 
of the element present in a material. So X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy is qualitative and as well as quantitative analytical technique. So basically you can determine a quality and as well as quantity of the different kind of element present in a material using X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy. X-rays are the part of electromagnetic spectrum. Electromagnetic spectrum is a spectrum which basically is based on energy and wavelength of the electromagnetic radiations. The shortest electromagnetic radiation is known as gamma rays. The wavelength of the gamma rays is around 10 to power minus 12 to 10 to power minus 14. Whereas the second shortest electromagnetic radiation is known as X-rays. The wavelength of X-rays is around 10 raised to power minus 10 to 10 raised to power minus 12. So these rays which are known as X-rays are also rays which are have a shortest wavelength. They are the secondary shortest wavelength are electromagnetic radiations. Now, interesting factor is that, dear student, every X-ray which is emitted or which is generated by a different kind of element, they have a specific type of wavelength and as well as energy and intensity. And their wavelength lies between 10 to the power minus 12 to 10 to the power minus 10 to minus 10. So in this range between 10 to the power minus 12 to 10 to the power minus 10 meter, they have a specific intensity and as well as energy. And on the basis of that, the elemental uh, and composition and as well as the presence uh, as well as the presence of the element is determined by excellence fluorescence spectroscopy. So in a simple word, dear student. Every element from which a secondary X-rays are generated, they, their wavelength, their intensity and their energy is associated with a property or with a characteristic of an element. So on the basis of that, you can basically, on the basis of secondary X-rays which is emitted from an atom of from an element which is present in a material you can basically determine an elemental composition or presence of an element in a material the intensity of the x-rays which is generated or the intensity of the secondary x-rays which is generated from an element give you information about the in-depth chemical composition of an element or chemical composition of an element in a material. So the energy with which X secondary excess are generated in excess fluorescence spectroscopy gives you information about the presence of an element in a material. Whereas the intensity of the X rays secondary X rays generated from an element gives you information about the overall chemical composition of an element in the material. What happened to the atom during X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy? What basically, what atom, how atom undergo in X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy? As I have previously discussed, in X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy, a high energetic X-ray is basically incident on a material. And due to high energetic incident X-rays, the material get excited. And when material get excited as a result of the excitation, a material emit a secondary excess. Now question here is that what happened with atom during X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy? Initially, 
स्टूडेंट एज यू नो दैट एन एटम कंसिस्ट ऑफ ए न्यूक्लियस न्यूक्लियस इज न्यूक्लियस इज ए कम्बिनेशन ऑफ ए पॉजिटिवली चार्ज पार्टिकल नोन एज प्रोटॉन्स वेयर एज इट आल्सो कंसिस्ट ऑफ ए न्यूट्रल पार्टिकल नोन एज न्यूट्रॉन स्टूडेंट दिस इज फॉर सिंप्लिसिटी न्यूक्लियस आल्सो कंसिस्ट ऑफ ए सब न्यूक्लियर पार्टिकल बट दे आर not relevant here so i will not discuss them here so in a simple word an atom consists of a nucleus nucleus is a consist of a positively charged particle known as proton whereas it also consist of a negatively charged a uh, uh, neutral charged particle known as neutron so overall charge on a nucleus of an atom is positive An electron revolves around a nucleus in a fixed energy level, and these energy level are known as shell. The first energy level around a nucleus is known as K shell. So the maximum number of electron possibly present in a K shell is two. every energy level is further divided into sub energy levels and these sub energy levels are known as sub shells every sub shell has electron present in it so the first energy level around the nucleus of an atom is known as k shell and k shell has one sub shell and it is known as 1s2 sub shell so the maximum number of electron in 1s2 sub shell is 2 this mean that the k shell has maximum number of 2 electrons the second energy level around a nucleus is known as l shell the second energy level is further divided into 2s2 2p6 energy level or 2p6 sub shells 2s2 sub shell have maximum number of 2 electrons whereas 2p6 sub shell have a maximum number of 6 electrons this mean that total number of electron present in l shell is 8 because 2s2 has a maximum number of 2 electron whereas 2p6 sub shell have a maximum number of 6 electron so total number of electron present in l shell is 8 the third energy level around a nucleus is known as m shell maximum number of electron in m shell possible is 18 m shell is divided into three sub shells 3s2 3p6 3d10 3s2 sub shell consist of two electron 3p6 sub shell consist of six electron and 3d n sub shell have a maximum number of 10 electrons so this mean that total number of electron 3 of 3s2 3p6 and 3d 10 sub shells become 18 so the maximum number of electron present in third energy level which is m shell is 18 now here i am giving an example of sodium atom i want to discuss x rays fluorescence spectroscopy from a sodium atom what happened during an x rays fluorescence spectroscopy in order to determine the presence of a sodium atom in a material so the 
atomic number of sodium is 11 so first shell k shell has two electron l shell which is a second shell has eight electron so total number of electron between k and l shell become 10 so only one electron remain and this one electron will go to third energy level which is m shell so m shell will have one electron so this basically become this become a schematic representation of a presence of electron in sodium atom. now let us discuss that what will happen in x-ray fluorescence fluorescent spectroscopy to determine the chemical composition of the sodium atom in x-ray fluorescent spectroscopy a high energetic beam of x-rays this is an x-ray incident beam of x-ray it will fall on the atom which will fall on the electron present in a sodium atom so now if the incident x-ray beam fall on an electron which is present at a lower energy level k shell of the sodium atom if the energy of this incident x-rays is higher than the binding energy of this inner shell k shell uh, electron then the high energetic incident x-rays will basically eject will remove the inner k or k shell electron from sodium atom like this so this means that the sodium atom become unstable because one of the electron from a lower energy core k shell is removed in order to make the sodium atom stable electron from higher energy level like K like L shell will jump into a lower energy back electron back in position K shell so electron from this L shell will jump into the vacant position of the ejected electron in a core K shell like this So now, when the electron from high energy level jump into a lower energy level core K shell, the electron will eject secondary X-rays and these secondary X-rays will be further analyzed by X-rays fluorescence spectroscopy detector and on the basis of the analysis chemical composition of the material and as well as the presence of an element of the material is determined now let make this schematic representation easy the student in a simple word, an atom consists of a nucleus and electron revolve in an energy level around a nucleus and these energy levels are known as a shell. We are giving here an example of a sodium atom. So the atomic number of sodium is 11. So the first shell which is K shell will have two electron whereas second shell L shell will have eight electron and third energy level will have one electron. So now in X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy, highly energetic X-ray beam, which is this one, is incident on electron which is present in a sodium atom or which is present in an atom okay so now when the high energetic beam of x-rays fall on electron present in an atom if the 
energy of the incident X-rays is higher than the binding energy of the electron which is present in an in energy level of an atom, then this higher energetic X-rays, which is a primary X-rays, will eject electron from an atom. So when electron is ejected from an atom, the atom will have a vacant position, it will have a vacancy in it. An atom will become unstable. In order to make an atom stable, electron from higher energy of the level of the same atom will jump into a vacant position of the core shell. So when electron from higher energy level jump into a vacant position, then the electron which during a transition from higher energy level into a low energy level will emit secondary X-rays. These secondary X-rays are analyzed by using X-ray fluorescence detector. On the basis of intensity of the emitted secondary X-rays, the quantity of the material or the quantity of the element present in a material is determined. Whereas on the basis of the energy of the emitted secondary X-rays, the qualitative elemental composition or the presence of element is determined. So this means that X-rays fluorescence spectroscopy gives you information about the presence of element and as well as the quantity of the presence of an element in the material. Now, there may be a complication in X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy in order to determine the chemical composition because an uh, atom or the different types of element present, they have a wide range of uh, atomic number and there may be a take place a transition between the different shells like a transition between uh, uh, M and L shell or N and M shell etc. So these transitions are further basically they are clarified by a detector and on the basis of their those chemical composition are also determined. But here for simplicity I have just given a schematic representation of a transition between K and L shell and on the basis of that basically uh, I have given that how, I have explained that how basically the excess fluorescence spectroscopy gives you information about the elemental and as well as chemical composition of the material. Express fluorescence spectroscopy is a very broad technique. You can basically analyze a presence of nearly 90% of an element on periodic table using X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy. You can basically analyze an elemental composition of nearly 90% of an elements which are present in a periodic table. With X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy, you can basically analyze uh, element from sodium up to a uh, uranium and thallium and palladium. So this means that this technique is a very diverse technique in order to determine the presence of an element in a material and as well as elemental composition of the material. Now, this trend, it is not necessary that with excess with with any kind of machine of excess fluorescence spectroscopy you can determine overall 90% of the element of the of the element of the periodic table. It depends on the sensitivity of your machine and it depends on the accuracy of machine which you are using in excess fluorescence spectroscopy. 
So this doesn't mean that with every uh, excess fluorescent spectroscopy instrument you can nearly you can nearly analyze 90% of the element of the product. It depends on the efficiency of the machine which you are using in excess fluorescent spectroscopy for analysis of the element and as well as elemental composition. How X-rays fluorescent spectroscopy works? This one, X-rays fluorescent spectroscopy consists of four essential components. The first part of X-rays fluorescent spectroscopy or first essential component of X-rays spectroscopy is X-rays source. As X-ray source is usually in X-ray fluorescent spectroscopy, an X-ray tube is used to generate an X-ray. Usually, this tube is based on a device known as an electron gun. Electron gun basically provides you a stream of beam of electron which is incident on a target surface and from that, a stream of a beam of highly energetic X-rays are generated in X-ray tube. So, the first and very important part of the X-ray fluorescent spectroscopy is uh, X-ray source. Or, and the second part of the X-ray fluorescent spectroscopy is a sample holder. A sample is basically placed on the sample holder which is present in X-ray fluorescent spectroscope. The third essential part of X-ray uh, fluorescent spectroscope is known as uh, X-ray fluorescent detector. So basically, X-ray fluorescent detector detect the emitted or detect the X-ray produced from the surface of the sample in X-ray spectroscope. X-ray fluorescent spectroscope consists of a filter. Filter is basically it is a component of the X-ray fluorescent spectroscope which is used to basically to focus, to magnify or to control the uh, X-rays which are basically produced from the X-ray source. Okay. So now in X-ray fluorescent spectroscopy, the X-rays are basically produced from the X-ray source like this. These X-rays have a very high energy. They are incident on the surface of the sample. So now when the high energetic X-rays which are produced from X-ray source are incident on the surface of the sample, the sample consists of an atom present in it. These atoms get excited due to these highly energetic X-rays. So due to excitation, the atom will eject a secondary X-rays like this. And these secondary X-rays are basically detected by the X-ray fluorescent spectroscope and on the basis of the intensity and as well as energy of these detected secondary X-rays by the X-ray fluorescent detector, the chemical composition and as well as the elemental composition of a material is determined. Now let make the let make this explanation very simple. Basically, X-ray fluorescent spectroscope consists of an X-ray source, sample holder, X-ray fluorescent detector, and as well as filter. The role of X-ray source is to generate high energetic primary X-rays. X-ray source is based on X-ray tube and which work 
on the basis of an electron gun which is a device which provide a highly energetic stream of beam of electron and in excess to this stream of beam of electron are incident on a target or on a surface of an anode and on the basis of that high energetic x-rays are produced from x-ray tube so in x-ray fluorescence spectroscopy highly energetic x-rays are basically produced from an x-ray tube or these highly energetic x-rays are which are produced by x-ray tube are incident on the surface of the sample and when these high energetic primary x-rays incident on the surface of the sample the surface of the sample get excited because a sample also consist of an element and this element have a different types of energy level there is a presence of an electron and this incident x-rays basically result into an excitation or and even emission of the electron when the electron from the surface of the atom or when the electron from the core shell of an atom they are ejected there occur a transition and due to a transition secondary x-rays will be generated from the surface of an atom of the sam- from surface of the sample and these secondary x-rays are basically detected by the x-ray fluorescence detector and on the basis of the intensity and as well as the energy of the detected secondary x-rays the chemical composition and as well as the presence of an element is determined by this technique so in a simple word basically dear student x-ray fluorescence spectroscopy is based on detection of a emission of a secondary x-rays from a sample surface every element emit a specific wavelength and as well as specific energy of secondary x-rays and on the basis of the specific energy and wavelength the nature or the type of an element is determined where is on the basis of intensity with which these secondary x-rays are generated in x-ray fluorescence spectroscopy the chemical composition of the material present or chemical composition of a of an element present in a material is determined so the secondary x-rays which are detected by a detector by an x-ray fluorescence detector is converted into an energy versus intensity spectrum like this energy spectrum basically determine the presence of an element whereas the intensity in a spectrum basically give you information about the net chemical composition of an element present in a material so in a simple word if i give consider this peak the peak of iron basically the intensity of this peak basically it is very higher as compared to the rest of the peak this mean that the amount of an iron is more in a material as compared to the peak which are generated intensity peak which are generated for a chromium silicon uh, sulfur or magnesium or nickel etc so basically the intensity peak in x-ray fluorescence fluorescence spectroscopy give you information about the net chemical composition of a material whereas the energy peaks at different 
every element have a different type of secondary electron energies and on the basis of the presence of this energy you can basically determine the presence of an element okay so elemental composition is basically determined on the basis of an energy of the secondary excess whereas the chemical composition of an element or the percentage composition of an element in a material is determined on the basis of a peak of intensity now dear student please keep in mind that secondary x rays which are generated in x rays fluorescence spectroscopy these secondary x rays may be by a uh, k alpha k beta k alpha 1 k alpha 2 k beta 1 k beta 2 l alpha l beta etc so on the basis of the emitted x rays on the basis of nature of emitted secondary x rays the energy peak may be very but there you usually you have a standard of the energies of the peak of k alpha k beta uh, l alpha l beta etc of different element and on the basis of that you can easily determine the presence of an element and also transition which type of transition take place which causes the emission of the secondary excess okay so the energy of the secondary excess may vary even for a same element because of the transition of electron in different energy level however you have usually in xrf you have a standard and on the basis of that standard on the basis of that you can have a comparison of energy then and on the basis of that you can have an idea about the presence of an element apart from this usually the composition is or this the intensity peak you can have an ratio of the intensity peaks which are generated from a different element of a material and when you have a percentage of these intensity peak like iron chromium iron titanium calcium uh, chromium etc you if you have a percentage of the the intensity of all those element which are present in a material on the basis of percentage you can have an idea about the net composition of a material and net composition of an element or net percentage of an element present in xrf spectra so this is just an overview of excess fluorescence spectroscopy in order to understand a, a very brief detail about excess fluorescence spectroscopy dear student please follow our lecture about our comprehensive lecture which is usually around 4 to 5 hour and you can basically in that lecture you can basically have a comprehensive idea about the excess fluorescence spectroscopy So thank you for watching this lecture